bite you. I promise. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most gratuitous nude scenes that did absolutely nothing to advance the movie's plot and only served to sexualize the characters. I can't believe we did that. Probably lock us up with Rorschach. Who cares? Number 20, A Brief Glimpse Into the Night Ed discovers his wife having an affair after coming from work. Already suffering from insomnia, he decides to drive out to LAX. There he comes into contact with Diana, who's being chased by dangerous men. <laughs> He takes her to her brother's place in Hollywood where she invites him as she's still in danger. Diana goes to the bathroom to clean up and change her clothes. During this time, though, we see her nude. She even walks out of the bedroom to get some clothes and Ed catches a glimpse of her. Don't go away, I'll be right out. It's brief, but not warranted. Number 19. Crashing the Change Room, Mall Rats. Normally found standing outside the quick stop, Jay and Silent Bob are at the mall and are on a mission to destroy a stage being set up for a game show. You know about this game show thing they got going on here? Well, we need you guys to somehow ensure that it doesn't happen. Is that it? We're gonna do that anyway. Really? Why? What else are we gonna do? During their first attempt at taking out the stage, Silent Bob is foiled by a kid whose toy causes him to go careening into the change room of a woman's clothing store where he bursts in on Gwen. Later, during another attempt, Silent Bob again crashes into a change room Gwen is in. This time, however, she's topless, trying on a shirt. It's a shot that the movie could do without. Number 18, a surprising reveal, Total Recall. A central question to this film is if the events that unfold really happen, or is it just a product of the memory implant from Recall? He's just acting out the secret agent portion of his ego trip. I'm afraid that's not possible. Why not? Because we haven't implanted it yet. Either way, Douglas Quaid finds himself in the middle of a conflict between rebel mutants on Mars and the agency. His journey takes him to a bar in Venusville called The Last Resort where he looks for a woman named Melina. He's told by the bartender that Melina is busy, but Mary's available. Looking for Melina. Well, she's busy. But uh, Mary here, she's free. Well, not free, honey. She unbuttons her shirt to reveal her chest, revealing a third breast. It's a well-known moment from the film, but it doesn't add much beyond novelty. Number 17, Mr. Chow, The Hangover. After a wild night in Vegas, Phil, Stu, and Alan retrace their steps to find their missing friend, Doug. They end up getting arrested for stealing a police cruiser. No one wants to look bad. We gotta get to a wedding, and you guys don't need people talking about how some obnoxious tourists borrowed your squad car last night. But look, the point is, I think we can work out a deal. After going through some tasing, the trio are able to get their Mercedes from the impound lot. While on the road, they hear knocking coming from the car's trunk. Thinking it's Doug, they rush out to open the trunk only for a naked Mr. Chow to pop out and attack them with a crowbar before running off into the distance. Who was that guy? He was so mean. Aside from the surprising nature of the attack, there isn't a good reason for him to be in the buff. Number 16, wrong number, Demolition Man. Look, we get it. Waking up 36 years in the future is jarring, and it's gonna take some time to get used to things. That's the situation John Spartan finds himself in when he's taken out of cryogenic stasis to stop criminal Simon Phoenix. I'm a blast from the past. <laughs> Should've stayed there. Oh boy, that voice sounds familiar. Who is that? Bad aim, Blondie. Spartan? John Spartan? Having just learned that kissing, touching, and the exchange of fluids has been outlawed from Lenina Huxley, Spartan returns to his apartment. While sitting down figuring out what to do next, a woman suddenly pops up on screen. She also happens to be naked before realizing that she has the wrong number and quickly disconnects the call. Wrong number. <laughs> Obviously, this adds nothing other than knowing that even in the future, it's possible to dial the wrong number. Number 15, a prominent member. Walk Hard, The Dewey Cox Story. This underrated comedy tells the story of Dewey Cox, a Johnny Cash-type musician. Early on in his career, when his music starts to take off, he's introduced to marijuana by his drummer, Sam. You know what? I don't want no hangover. I can't get no hangover. It doesn't give you a hangover. After Sam very poorly warns Dewey to stay away from the narcotic, Dewey begins smoking and soon finds himself in a hotel room after a wild night. He's on the phone talking to his wife while all around him are many nude individuals. It's very excessive, but perhaps topping everything off is when Dewey's roadie, Bert, enters the frame and all we see is his lower half. Who's that? Oh, that's just Bert, my roadie. Just wants to know if I want any coffee or anything like that. If it was just a quick shot, that'd be one thing, but this just screams, look, a penis. Number 14, Skinny Dipping, Doc Hollywood. Dr. Ben Stone is on his way to an important job interview in Los Angeles. While passing through the small town of Grady, South Carolina, he gets into a car accident and is sentenced to do 32 hours of community service in the town. Your sentence will be 16 hours of community service served as resident doctor at Grady Memorial Hospital. 
All right, look, I have to be in Los Angeles by Tuesday, so I don't... 32 hours. This is extortion! You want 64 hours? After spending the night with the welcome committee, he wakes up the following morning and wanders outside by a nearby body of water. Suddenly, a woman emerges from the water completely nude. Ben is awestruck, and why wouldn't he be? This lady comes from nowhere and walks right up to him before putting a shirt on. You can blink now. It only adds shock value and not much else. Number 13. Saving the Princess Kingsman The Secret Service In his effort to stop Valentine from unleashing a signal that will cause everyone to become incredibly violent, Eggsy encounters an imprisoned Swedish princess. Aren't you that princess that went missing? You can't get me out. What well, if I do? Will you give me a kiss? In exchange for saving the world, she offers Eggsy the chance to engage in some backdoor activities with her. Some fans of the film found this particular joke to be excessive and see it as a tonal shift from the rest of the movie. Once Eggsy does, in fact, save the world, naturally comes back to where the princess is held, where she proceeds to turn over, revealing her behind. Did you save the world? Yes, I did. So, you gonna come in? Yes, I am. It's right at the end, and it comes off as throwing in nudity for the sake of it. Number 12. Hallelujah. Watchmen. There's something to be said about Dr. Manhattan swinging around his manhood like there's no tomorrow. It can be argued that his lack of clothing demonstrates his diminishing humanity. You know how everything in this world fits together except people. What am I to you? Another puzzle to be solved. Have your men stand back. I'm teleporting the reactor to Karnak now. You're my only remaining link to the world. Even still, it's a lot to take in. However, the moment of intimacy between Silk Spectre and Night Owl is something else entirely. After the pair rescue people from a burning building, they get it on in Night Owl's ship. The whole thing is so over the top, especially with the inclusion of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah playing over the scene. World War III could start tomorrow. Right. Right. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David Combined with the dramatic lighting and close-ups, we're just left asking, what are we doing here? Number 11. Swimming Pool Fantasy Fast Times at Ridgemont High Linda and Stacy are chilling in the backyard when Damone and Rat show up unexpectedly to hang out with the girls. Hey, come over to help you with your math homework. Figured you could use it on such a hot day. A bit later, Stacy's older brother, Brad, arrives having just finished work. He nonchalantly says hi to Linda before going inside, but we soon see him peeking at her from the bathroom window. He begins to fantasize about her, coming out of the pool and declaring her interest in him. Hi, Brad. You know how cute I always thought you were. Before kissing him, she takes off her top because of course she would. It's a moment that doesn't add anything as the sequence is pure imagination on Brad's part. In fact, the two characters don't even interact much beyond Linda walking in on him. Number 10. Bottomless Party Harold and Kumar escape from Guantanamo Bay these two incorrigible stoners have just washed up on Miami Beach and need help clearing their names with Homeland Security. Harold and Kumar turn to their only friend in the area, but they're in for a surprise when they get to his house. Hi, hey. Fed up with the overpopularity of the topless party trend, Raza has decided to host a bottomless party. The scene comes off as an excuse to show a house full of women with no pants on, just because. The Harold and Kumar films seem to have established themselves as the go-to for excessive amounts of needless sex and nudity. The first installment even featured a scene in which a bizarre couple propositions the bumbling pair. Since we're all here, how about a foursome? Number 9. Dancing in the Cemetery – The Return of the Living Dead There's no place quite like a graveyard to get you in the mood. As a group of punks hang out waiting for their friend to get off work, a character named Trash gets turned on thinking about gruesome ways to die. Do you ever fantasize? about being killed. Never. Out of nowhere, she starts taking her clothes off, and based on her friend's comments, this is pretty typical behavior for Trash. Just before she dances on a tomb, she strips down completely naked except for her leg warmers. A strange choice considering everyone keeps complaining about the heat. Trash spends the next half hour of the movie mostly naked until, unsurprisingly, she gets eaten by zombies. 80s horror movies sure love to punish women who weren't impeccably pure. Number 8. Spying in the Shower – 16 Candles This is a weird scene to include barely 10 minutes into a movie about high schoolers, especially one that otherwise remains fairly chaste throughout its runtime. Sam has a crush on a senior named Jake, who is currently dating the beautiful and popular Caroline Mulford. While at school on Sam's 16th birthday, she and her friends stare at Caroline in the shower, jealous of her mature body. Unbelievable. We get that the filmmakers want to show that Sam is self-conscious about her own appearance and thinks she can't compete with Caroline, but surely there are much less explicit ways to do that, no? Number 7. Yacht Party 
Entourage. Why does Hollywood think that women are super eager to get naked at parties thrown by rich guys? Before the opening credits even roll, this movie whisks its audience away to a yacht off the coast of Ibiza, where newly single Vince is hosting a party. Who throws a party when his wife leaves him on their honeymoon? Vince does. And why wouldn't he? The guest list is primarily women in bikinis, both with and without their tops. Of course, anyone who's watched the Entourage series knows to expect plenty of nudity and casual sex, with women's bodies often treated like set dressing. It's probably fair to say that the feature film is just giving its audience what it wants. Number 6. Bird in the Buff – Howard the Duck This one might be the weirdest example of pointless nudity ever put to film. The movie opens on Howard's home planet of Duck World, where our leading man, or a duck, has just settled into his armchair to relax. After channel surfing for a bit, he pulls out a copy of Play Duck magazine, and we're treated to an image of a female duck wearing only a corset. But it doesn't stop there. The room begins shaking, and Howard and his chair are pulled by some unseen force right through the wall. Casey! Did you hear something? As he crashes through his neighbor's apartments, we see another female duck topless in the bathtub. This begs all kinds of questions, the first one being, why would a bird have human-like anatomy? Ooh. Number 5. Surprise in a Cake – Under Siege How can you make a tense action movie even more enthralling? Add a nude model jumping out of a cake, of course. When a band of hijackers take over a battleship during the captain's birthday party, everyone forgets about the beautiful woman waiting in the cake. And after taking too much seasickness medication, she forgets her job too and falls asleep. <sighs> Must be nuts. Later, as Steven Seagal patrols the ship, taking out mercenaries one by one, he jostles the cake and wakes her up, prompting her to start stripping before even realizing what's going on. Let's just say, if the filmmakers wanted Seagal to team up with a real-life Playboy Playmate, there are less gratuitous ways to do it. My name is Jordan Tate. I'm in July 89. Number 4. Random Unmotivated Nudity – Open Water This sleeper hit was inspired by the real-life disappearance of an American couple who were accidentally abandoned at sea while on a diving trip. The low-budget camera and sound work give the film a documentary feel, which makes it even more bizarre when the lead actress suddenly appears fully naked with no warning. Early in the movie, she lays in bed, on the night before the dive, wearing nothing but some face cream. There's literally no purpose for this nudity. It doesn't even lead into a sex scene. In fact, there's nothing sexual in the movie at all. So why did we need to see Blanchard Ryan naked? You okay? Number 3. Unexpected Undressing – Trading Places One of the most acclaimed movies of the 1980s, Trading Places is more sophisticated than the average comedy. That's why Jamie Lee Curtis's sudden toplessness at the midway point is so jarring. When wealthy financier Lewis ends up on the street as the result of a sadistic experiment by his bosses, Curtis's Ophelia takes him in out of pity, having played a role in his downfall. Now you want me to help you out? I expect a lot in return. After giving him the lowdown of her life, she suddenly begins undressing in front of him. It's not the only instance of unnecessary nudity in the film, but it is arguably the most pointless. Get your on and get out. Number 2. Topless Vacuuming – Working Girl When she finds out her boss is planning to steal her idea for a merger, Tess waits until she goes on vacation, then secretly takes over her role. Things go better than expected. She impresses her colleagues and even hooks up with a young Harrison Ford. As Tess rushes to prepare for her boss's return, the film suddenly cuts to a shot of her vacuuming in only high heels and underwear. The moment comes out of nowhere. Not only is it unmotivated, but the logistics of it just make no sense. After taking off her clothes, did she put her heels back on just to vacuum? In a film with strong feminist themes, especially for the time period, the scene is just baffling. What's it about? Um, I'm so nervous I can't stand still. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Half Million Dollar Scene – Swordfish Hacker Stanley has been recruited by a covert anti-terrorism operation to create a computer worm. I'm not what you think I am. After waking up in their cushy headquarters, he finds one agent, Ginger, relaxing outside wearing only a bikini bottom. The famous scene was Halle Berry's first nude appearance on camera, and it generated a lot of buzz before the film was even released. Berry has denied the director's claim that she was paid an extra $500,000 to appear topless, but she's well aware that the moment is totally gratuitous. Still, she credits the scene with helping her overcome her fear of burying her body on screen. 
Although panned by critics, Swordfish recouped its production budget, thanks at least in part to this incredibly pointless nudity. Just a thought. Just a thought. Are there any nude scenes you think are pointless? Let us know in the comments. You know they have a whole room you're supposed to do that in? Yeah, well some pervert wanted to see me naked so badly today he busted in on me twice while I was trying on stuff. This saves him the effort. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.